this set of videos is going to be all about installing GNOME. I'm going to go into the uh, XFC4 um, environment because it's a little bit nicer than the TWM. So I'm just going to control this by switching to run level 5. Yeah, I've got it already set there. Just log in. So what I'll do first of all is get up the browser. I'm actually going to put it on this side. It's a bit more logical. I should have done this. I normally have the browser on the left and the terminal on the right. Um, not sure why I've done it differently this time up to now, but never mind. Um, and I'll get an XFC terminal up as well. Just make this a little bit bigger. Okay, I think I'll just see how far off the bottom that window goes. Yeah, I'll leave it there because the bottom line disappears a little bit. So, okay, so let's get rid of these tabs we don't need. And let's go into GNOME. There it is. So you can see it's, it's quite a big install. Um, especially compared to what we've been doing so far. And so that, as you can see by the highlighted links, we've installed probably about a third of it, I guess. So um, it shouldn't take as long as you might expect. Um, also, a lot of the dependencies will be installed, although there will be other new dependencies to to put in so it'll be more than what you see here but not as much as it could be so I'm going to open this up in a new tab and we'll just move on to see if there's anything it says about it it looks like we'll just jump straight in with the first one so I'm just going to skip over these ones and go straight into this totem PL um, just thought what I might do actually is I think I'll create a separate GNOME directory as well like I've been doing with the other uh, like packages if you like so make one called GNOME and what I'll do first of all is move the packages that I've already used or create um, yeah already built into the gnome. So uh, let's do this the other way around. Let's go into so GCR, G settings, lib secret, rest. Totem is the one I'm about to build. VTO. 5.8 ok, is that low case? gconf gjs ok, maybe we haven't done that one then Those highlighted. No, it doesn't look like it's there. So I have to remember to install that one then. Uh, GNOME desktop, GNOME online accounts, libg data. 
WN version 3 deconf and de deconf editor GVFS GXIV No keyring Notification daemon pull kit gnome and gnome screenshot and they're all going into the GNOME directory. So it's done. Okay, so let's go into Totem Parser. And as you can see, this needs, let me just shrink this so this is right next to that window, that's better. This um, has got all the dependencies, so let's download it. So it's just straightforward build with these instructions. And test it. Right, already we've got a failure. Uh, it seems to be the problem with this GIO module again. Hmm, this doesn't bode well. Um, I must admit, I haven't installed GNOME for. Oh, probably between 10 and 15 years I should think um, certainly before even system D was invented uh, which is no requirement for it the only reason we can build it with system V is because of the e -log D package rather e -log in D um, Right, I wonder if I need to do that we shared. Oh, it does say some other requirements for tests so whether that's why it's failing actually Yes, I suppose I can't be sure 
It does say there are other packages required for tests. I can't be sure that, that it's not a problem with that or something else. So what I can do is Ninja install. And I guess if there is generally something problem, we'll find out about it later on, unfortunately. Okay, so that's the totem playlist. Let's tidy it up. Right, mark that one off. So we skip the VTE because we've already installed that. And we move on to Yelp XSL. Definitely haven't got that. We've got the dependencies, so let me save this. So it's quite simple, just configure and then straight to install. There's documentation there, so let's have a look to see if we've got anything about building that. It doesn't look like there is. I'll enable doc. As to whether we've got the requirements for it, I don't know until we, find, uh, until we run it, so let's try it. <clears throat> right, that seems to have worked. So let's install it. Um, can't be sure it's actually installed in the documentation there actually. Doc, doc, doc. But um, at least it's it's worked. It's built. Um, right, so gconf we've done. And gokglib is the next one. Again, we've got the requirements. So this one we can build a documentation. Let's just remove it or I guess you could put in true and then ninja to build it. And ninja. So that boom, okay. So that's that package done. Now GJS. It was highlighters and maybe it wasn't something that actually got built. Um, in fact, I haven't got it crossed off on my list, so that confirms that it wasn't built. So let's download this. So straightforward configure and make. And oh, let's just stop that there a moment and just read the output of configure. Looks okay.
Right, so I can run make check to run the tests. Does so it needs an XORG session, which we're in, obviously, and two tests are known to fail, but again, we seem to have passed that, so that's good. Install it, and that's done. GJS. Then move on to GNOME Auto R. So again, we've got the dependencies. Um, we can enable some documentation. Okay, and build it with make. And install it. It's done. Auto R. So next one we've done, known desktop. So we'll skip over that. And we go on to GNOME menus. So again, we've got the dependencies. So if you're upgrading GNOME, right, so we're not doing that, we're installing it fresh, we don't need to worry about what that says there. And to install it, there's no extra options offered to us, so let's just build it as it is. And install it. So that's GNOME menus. Now we move on to GNOME Video Effects. So again, there's no other options, just copy and paste and install. And that's done. Now we move on to No more online accounts are done, so skip that one and move on to Grilo or Grillo. Grilo, probably. Again, it looks like we've got all the dependencies, either ones we've just built, such as Totem Peel Parser. Um, the others look very familiar. So let's download this. So there's a documentation option there which we can set. Build it. And we can run ninja test. So we haven't got any miss missing dependencies at all. So, in theory, these tests should pass, and they have done. Ninja install. I'm 
and that's done. Right out now, Lib Champlain is the next one. So we've got a requirement here of something called Clutter GTK. Um, let's just check we've got Clutter. We've certainly got the other packages. Let's see what this uses. So, where is that library it should report it to us hopefully yeah it knows about it so definitely got clutter so this belongs in the BLFS because it's part of the X libraries it's not part of GNOME I'll just move it there and then I'll just extract it from there into the GNOME directory. And we can enable some documentation for this one. That looks good, and we can build it. And now we can make install done. So that's clutter, which was in twenty five cluster GTK. Sorry, and there's two here, so we've just installed. 1.8.4 So now we can build libchamplain So again, these are all quite straightforward builds, these packages just a matter of copying and pasting. So do you want to see ninja install? It's done. So the next package we've done, libg data, so we move on to We'll skip that one and move on to libg. And looks like we've got all the requirements for that. So, normal configure make. Got make check, but there is one LCOV package off the book which is missing, so there's a chance that might affect the tests, or it might be intelligent enough to know it hasn't got it and just skip those tests. Well, that looks okay. Install it and it's done. libg, now we've got libg top. So we've got the dependencies again. So, fairly standard, and we've just got the option to add in configuration for building documentation. So, 
is done. And it's all installed. So LibG top's done. Next one we've got is LibG weather. So again we've got all the optional package packages. Let's install that. So we need a fix with that set command. We can add gtk doc equals true to this meson command. And build a package with ninja. And we can test the results. All passed. Make uh, an ninja install. And that's built. It's got lib peas. So again, we've got all the BLFS requirements installed. So we've got some extra switches we can add in here. So VAPI true, we've got Valor, so let's add that in. Demos, we can leave the demos and we can build the documentation. So demos is true, documentation false. Okay, I don't know what that is. Maybe, again, it could be these external optional packages um, that the documentation needs in addition to GTK doc. Unknown options, oh right, unknown option, that's why. Um, I'm not sure how these meson files work. Um, these are right, this got meson options, so let's have a look at that. GTK underscore doc. So it looks like this is this might be the option that gets passed in on the command line. Because we've got VP, VAPI there. So maybe it should be GTK underscore doc. So let's try that. No, it doesn't like that at all. Oh, it's because I've recreated the build directory. Uh, 
that's better. So the BLFS manual is incorrect there. So if you do want to build a documentation, that'll have to be a, an underscore. So let's build this package now. That's done. We can test it. And that's a pass. And that's complete now. Oops. So that's libp's finished. So next one libwnck with all the installed. So the next one is Evolution Data Server. Got one recommended dependency. Let me just quickly check the others. If I can, I'll check that one. I think we've got that. If I can, General Libraries. I'm sure we've got that. I think we've got nearly all, if not all. Okay, yep, got that one. So B local D. So we've got the dependencies. Let's save this and move it into normal BLFS directory and then again just extract it, extract it from there into the GNOME directory. And configure and build. And test. That's done. Be local D. Where's that located? That was chapter 12, wasn't it? Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. It's not on the list. Oh, it's out of order. It's not in alphabetical order for some reason. Just noticed it then. Right, so that's complete. Next one we've got is Evolution Data Server, so we've got all the dependencies. So this has got a big config, let's have a look. So we'll leave those in. We'll change the GTK document to on. Oh, it's broken. Again, to, due to long deprecated GTK doc program that's no longer available. That's probably one that's appeared a few times when we've tried to build a documentation and it's failed. Um, and it hasn't always been mentioned on each package where it has failed. So I think it says there's many optional dependencies. So I guess we can just have a quick look at that.
Oh, right, okay. To, to enable, oh, to enable me the optional dependencies, review the information for the necessary parameters. All oh, right, you must pass the CMake list. Well, so there is quite a few. Um, don't know what what's needed, not needed here, so I'm just going to ignore that. I'll um, just build with the options that we've been given. Right, does this mean because that command did something that I need to start again perhaps? Because I did these a little bit out of order. So let's try this again. It's built, we can run make test.
Okay, so one of the tests failed there, but um, I reloaded the library cache with LD config and um, it seems to have fixed it, so um, I'm going to accept that as a pass. So the thing I need to do now is to make install. Seems to be okay. Yep, so that's evolution data server. Next one we've got is folks. Yeah. So we've got one. Oh, sorry, two dependencies here. Oh, broken due to API changes in Tracker. I'll try it anyway, because i say some of the comments in the book aren't exactly up to date. Right, now we're getting into a bit of a dependency um, tree here, so let's pull all these up. Um, right, one of those two, I'll see which one needs the fewest number of um, dependencies. First one we've got is all right, libnl. Oh, that's NDP. Let's just check. Got libnl. Yeah. So we've got some kernel configuration to do here. Now, I haven't installed the firmware for my wireless, so I'm not particularly bothered that it's not working, but programs might expect to see certain kernel um, modules enabled or configured. So, I'm going to I will check the kernel. just in case it matters and you can see now that we're in a different um, terminal emulator that it's got um, a full character set so it's drawing the characters correctly or, or that it recognizes the locale we've chosen so that's why this looks a little bit prettier now so networking support wireless it's already set. CFG802 on one's already set. And extensions compatibility we need to set as well. And generic network stack. That was that one there. That's already set. Go back to device drivers. Network device support is down here. And when you set wireless, well, I assume wireless LAN is already set because the um, wireless option under networking support was, um, it wasn't an option to set, it was already set by default. And I think it's set by this option here when I can find it. Yeah, I'm sure it's this option that does it. And here is actually where we set the device. So what I want to do is turn all of these off. You don't really need them and what I'm going to do is get the new can I open a new tab in here yes I can and I'll have to do sudo um, ls pci uh, minus k for kernel 
and somewhere here we should be able to find yeah it's this one here I think that's the wired network connection audio memory yeah I think one of these is the Bluetooth and the other one is the um, wireless normal wireless so as long as I can find something that says 9565 I think I should be okay so uh, oh I need to know the manufacturer so we've got Qualcomm or a Theros oh they're both the same looks of it so it's going to be under there and it's QCA or AR9565 so there's nothing really obvious there what we can do is search for 9565 nothing found um, what I might have to do is look into the help for each of these Let's try this one first. I suppose wireless adapters based on it. So it could be that one. Uh, was there a module name? Probably not. No. This has gone off the screen because I've got two tabs now. So what I'm going to do is clear the screen and do LS mod. So it looks like I've got Bluetooth stuff. Um, I'm going to try and do INS mod and the module that's listed here. Oh, 802, I wonder if it could be that one even. Right, so it does look like it's going to be either the AS, AS, ATH9K or ATH10K. So maybe it might be worth looking at this. In fact, what I could also do is type in AR. Is it 9565 was it? PCI 1K. AR. What have I done there? Clear. Oh, okay. Right. The keyboard's not set up. I forgot about that. Um, let's remove grep and oh I've, I just realised I'm meant to go into the XFC4 because the keyboard could be set there but it can't be on LXDE unfortunately um, so I might do that now uh, right yeah let's do that before I go any further. So let's close these down. So just log out and switch to XFC. Okay, that's better. I'll just move this terminal over to here. Oops. Right, they all have their good parts. This one doesn't seem to have a perfect snap, whereas the other one did on the Windows. 
Right, and... I'll keep this, this bigger. So, LSPCI... Minus K, grep, AR. Five six five AR nine five six five um, wireless. So I want the Linux driver. So it looks like somebody's used the ATH nine K driver there. Um, now there is a page with these drivers on shore kernel ATH9K oh it might be this one here actually nine five six five there it is there uh, Single band, yes, I think it is. I don't think it's got the dual band. Anyway, that's the number. So, AR nine double o four looks like is the option we want. Let's have a quick look at ten in case that does support dual band. I'm not sure off the top of my head if it does support it. Uh, it doesn't look like that's there. 9565. No, it's not there. So it's definitely the 9K one that I want. So, um, I'll become root again. So, device drivers, network device support. And I want to go into wireless and I want that one there I think wasn't it help yeah ATH 9k let's see what this link takes us to oh so this looks like it's Five. Oh, these are actual devices, I think, aren't they? That's, and it says it's horribly out of date, so there's not much help. So anyway, I think I'm pretty happy that it's that oops, that driver. So I'll insert that as a module. Oh, that's opened up some other options. All right, okay. It's pulled in the Bluetooth because it's a combined unit unit as it shows in LSPCI. So that's good probably means I'll get some Bluetooth working now. I uh, don't know what that is. If Say no if I'm sure. So I haven't got a system on the chip, so obviously I don't need whatever that is. Debugging I don't need. This is about 
don't know what that is, so I'll leave that. Wycon Wireless Land, no, I don't need any of these. PCI Loader. Right, so I don't look like I need that one. So that's all the changes I need to make. Make sure I save them. So I'll get rid of these pages now. Like I said, I'm not too bothered if it doesn't actually work. I'm not going to be connecting with it, but it would be nice to get it working. Just to check that I've actually made those changes, I'm going to check the config for these options. Uh, sorry, I didn't mean to do that. That should be put through grep. So config.net, that's a big one. Let's not bother with that one. Let's check config wireless instead. So that is set. Uh, that one's set, and Wext as well is set the next one, so that's good. Let's check the Mac. That's also set. Then want to check Net Devices, that's set, and WLAN, which is also set, that's good. And finally, I'm just going to check that AS ATH AS9K is set, and it is, and it's set to a module, which is what I set it to. So that's that's good. So now I'm going to rebuild the kernel. Okay, so that kernel's been built. Now I'm going to do the usual thing of backing up um, my current kernel files. So cp minus v config.
system map and Fairmliners. So go back to the source directory and first thing we'll do is copy the config file into boot config copy the system map to boot system map and copy the kernel um, to boot PM Linux. So what I want to do now is to reboot to enable those changes. So I'll come out of root and I'll try and reboot from here. Can I do that? Yes, I can. Uh, might not be working because it's not possibly not been set up correctly being we're using init so let's just quit this then yeah it's not it's not working yeah it's broken something as well um so what I can do is go to my first terminal do init three there stop the session and then I can just come out and reboot So I'm going to go back in to the XFC desktop. So I'll start the uh, desktop manager up. Right, because of the way I exited, it looks like it hasn't saved all the settings. Right, so um, let's have a look at the kernel. The yeah, the kernel modules. Can't see that module probably because there's no wireless activated. So let's go to sources PLFS, and I probably want to be here for a while while I install these few packages. So let's get. WPA supplicant. I'll save it here and right, so it says um, in the initial configuration file. It says this should work for standard Wi-Fi setups. If you wish to use WPA Supplicant Network Manager, which is one we're going to be installing, make sure that you've installed DBus and Libex ML2 and then add the following to WPS applicant build configuration file. Okay, let's do that. Then install by running the following commands. 
Let's see if there's any other options. Doesn't look like it. If you install Qt5, I wish to build the WP Supplicant program, install the following commands, or run the following commands, so let's do this. As we've got Qt, why not? That's done. It's become the root to install the package. And if you've built it with dbus support, you need to install dbus files. So let's do those. If you've built the WPA supplicant GUI program install it with the following file uh, from commands. So we've done that as well. You need to restart the system debus DIN before you can use WPA. So this could crash the windowing system, possibly because it's using it. Yeah, it has. So we'll have to log in again. Again, because it wasn't a nice exit, it's forgotten about the window locations. Package install desktop files into the dessert. To perform this, you must have desktop file. Yep, okay, let's do that command then. So there's some configuration. Right, so like I said, I'm not going to um, have the wireless running. So um, I won't bother configuring this any further. And I'll just leave it at that. Sources BLFS and remove the source pack uh, source directory. So now we're gonna download Newt. Oh, but uh, um, mark off that WPA supplicant actually. So I'm not sure that'll be networking. Yeah, it's chapter 15. So this is now Newt. Got all the options. We can add GP. Oh, it does add GPM support. That's good. So we can just install this. Make install, and that's done. And that's complete. This is chapter ten. It's new to complete. Now we're going to install IP tables. So this needs 
some kernel support. So let's become the root again. Go into the kernel configuration. So networking support, networking options, we want network packet filtering framework. So that's already set. Advanced net filter configuration, then core net filter configuration. We want net filter connection tracking support. That's already set. Net filter X table support. That's already set. And log target support. And that's already got module set to it, that's okay. Um, I just realized why the wireless module wasn't installed, and it's because I didn't do make install on the kernel, so I'll have to remember to do that now when I've rebuilt this kernel. So next thing we need is core net filter, IP net filter configuration. So that's that option. And we want IP table support. And that's already set as well. So there's no other changes there. So let's make, I'm not sure, never sure if this runs in parallel or not. I'll just run it. I think it does. <clears throat> I think it uses the make flags, but I'm never quite sure because it seems to run quite slow sometimes. So it's built, so first of all I'm going to back up my existing files. <coughs> Oops. So that's the config backed up. System map. And 
and the kernel. So now I can copy the config. into boot config copy system map into boot system map and copy arch x86 underscore 64 bz image into boot vm linus then make modules install Bit I've got to last time. <coughs> so I'm going to log out nicely this time and then reboot from here. So again, I'm going to use uh, init5 to go in via the desktop manager into XFCE. And hopefully it will remember the window positions and it has done correctly this time. <coughs> so that should be the kernel configured now. Um, So did I download this IP tables? Yes I did, didn't I? So I'll start the build, let's check some options here. Not sure what that is, but I'll enable it um, just in case it's something that could be useful. So let's paste that in there and copy the switch. Let's just check the options, it's not anything there. Oh, uh, NF side proxy, NF sin proxy. Uh, must be a spelling mistake there. So we've got libp cap, so it should build the look, should build the looks of it. <coughs> so I'll paste that in and configure. And I'll now build it. That's done. So let's install it. It looks like that's it. So DH, oh dear, more kernel. <laughs> um, oh right, so it's either of these, wasn't it? Let's look. So I don't usually connect with DHCP, I don't normally install this, but um, it was a recommended installation. So that's a daemon, so that must be for the server. I'll just say this is a client. I 
and this one contains a client and a server so that's probably why it's got kernel configuration so I won't install this one I'll install this one because it does say it's just a client Okay, so we've got the two options. Let's download the package. Tidy up here. So let's have a look at the options here with Hook. I won't bother with this because I'm only really interested in installing the package rather than having anything working. Um, so let's run make test. That's okay. Make install. That's done. Um, I'm not even going to configure it because I, I don't want it to interfere with my static assignments that I've got. So I won't go any further with that. Um, again, I'm forgetting to mark off these packages. Um, IP tables, that was the other one. Let's just see where that one is. Oh, security. IP tables. And DHCPD is 14. Okay, so now we've got libndp. So there's no options here for the configure. Just take what we've been given and install it. That's that done. So it's chapter 17 with NDP. So now we should be okay to build Network Manager. Networking Utilities. Okay, so this needs more kernel configuration. Let's check these options. They could well be already set. Um, let me just have a look at the modules. Yeah, that S9K has been loaded, so that's obviously the right one. It's loaded a few other modules, so that's good. That shows it's the, well, it gives a good indication it's the correct driver. Uh, so let's look at the boot config net devices. So that's set, that's okay. Bonding is not set. Okay, so we need to actually go and do some more changes to the kernel, unfortunately. So 
So device drivers, network device support is down here. Bonding driver support, there it is there. So it's got it set rather than the module. It's actually got the um, option set. Um, although the brackets indicate it's an older version of the kernel because it looks like it's it can be set to a module. I'm going to set it to a module. Dummy net driver support and Ethernet team driver support. So let's rebuild this again. nice and quick. So once again back up the files in the boot directory. So it's config system map. And VM Linux, the kernel. And go back and copy. The ideal thing here would be to create a script to do this. Although I've probably not got many more <laughs> changes to the kernel to make. Um, cp.config into the boot config. CP system map into boot system map and CP arch x86 to boot VM Linux and then make modules install. Okay, and once again I'm going to come out of here log out and reboot So log in again and we should be able to build that now. So it says if Qt is installed, there's some Qt based examples so we can add them to the meson build. Fix a missing these on build file. Fix some scripts for Python 3 or to use Python 3. And then we've got a huge configuration here. Let's just examine some of the options. Docs equals true. Can't actually see that there, so we need to add that one in. NMTUI. So that's already set. System D, system D. In case we don't touch them. Because we're not using system D. JSON validation equals false. With PSL false. What about the respective libraries? Um, I can't 
don't see anything. Choice validation, lib audit, and lib PSL. Lib audit. <coughs> oh, lib PSL's there. I think we've got lib audit. Uh, let's search for that one. Maybe not. Let's have a look. There isn't anything called audit. Lib audit. Okay, so maybe it's worth just keeping those ones in there. Then we can remove the PSL because we have got the PSL. Does that put in? Oh, sorry, no, it's not audit. DOVS. DOVS. Not sure what that is. So we've got modem manager installed. Session tracking is a login D. Can't see where that is, there it is there. Oh yes, lib audit and SE Linux are not using BLFS. Okay, so we've got to leave those ones. QT is false. So we're not to leave that off. Okay, so we've got quite a bit of jiggling around here. Let's build the build directory. So I'm going to try leaving off this JSON validation because we have got some JSON packages in. Um, we need the lib order equals no. We've got PSL, so we can leave that off. We need this one. I don't know what OVS is. I'm going to try and see if we've got that. I haven't got PPP or SE Linux. You don't uh, probably need that. Definitely need session tracking. We've got modem manager. So it says omit it. System D. Yeah, we need these two as well. Because we're not using system D. And we omit the QT false. Let's just see. If there's anything else, oh, we can add in docs equals true. Left that out, we've got that in. We don't want PPP, we've got those in, and we've remitted that as well. So let's try. Seeing if that builds broadband provider info. So that could be one of those optional ones, such as OVS. I'm not sure what that does. I'm going to add in minus D O V S equals false in case it's that one. I'm not sure what that is. I don't recognize that. No, it's not that one. So I'm going to add in um, this JSON one because I can't see there's anything that that ties up with. No, it's still no good. Um, well, what I can 
do then? I'll just try the PSL equals false to see if that changes that. I don't think it will. No, it hasn't. Uh, let's try putting in that equals false. No. Right, so in that case what I'm going to try then is to put just the default configuration in and see how that affects things. So that passed. So it's obviously one of the other switches that I'm putting in that's affecting this. Oh, I should have left the PPP in, shouldn't I? Is that what it is? No, I've got the PPP in. I see Linux false. Well, it could be the modem manager. I thought we had modem manager installed. That's probably what it is. Let's have a look. MMCLI. That's what it is. Yeah, it's there. So maybe there's an option in there that's... No, it looks like we've got everything in there. I bet that's what's causing the problem. So if I rerun that... Config command there. Oh, what have I done? Oh, is it because it's already configured? That's probably what it is. These on set up wipe. Oh, should that be like that? Maybe. see. Um, it's probably easier to remove everything in here. And rerun it. So let's just get the failure. Yeah, so if I now put in minus D uh, modem manager equals false. Yeah, now it's running. So I don't know why it's installed, but maybe something else needs to be configured in Modem Manager for it to work. So now I'm going to run Ninja. Build this. It may fail possibly because of those um, things I left out, like the JSON validate and the, the PSL and DOVS. I don't know what DOVS is at all, but we'll see if it, it does fail or not. Actually, the modem manager could be failing because I've disabled PPP, possibly. Point-to-point uh, -point protocol.
Okay, so it did build, that's good. We can run ninja test. Oh, and it's got to be run as root actually. So it's failed. Oh, there's four failures. Signal abort. So I'm not sure why these have failed. Unknown device type. Okay, so maybe it's something else that needs to be configured. Could be that the it could be the wireless or something like that that's not configured. So I'll just install that. I say I'm not too worried about this uh, networking stuff. As long as it doesn't interfere with what's already working, which is why I'm a bit tentative about um, configuring too much. I'll just notice it does save as modem manager. I admit if you've got mobile broadband provider info, so it's obviously another package, but it doesn't appear to be mentioned in the modem manager or, or in this section. I don't think I saw it anyway. Oh, yes, it is there. No, oh, I didn't see that. So that's obviously what that was all about. It just shows that it pays to read things carefully. Okay, so we've got the install done, which has got one file to move. And that's done. Well, it's actually a rename. Uh, some configuration, right, so let's stick this in. This is a minimal conf file. So there's another one to allow Polkit to make changes. To use something other than the built in DHCP part. So I'm not going to put that in. I don't think. To use something other than the built in DHCP client. Yeah, I'm going to leave that out at the moment, I think. Um, actually, no, I'll leave it in there. Network Manager for modifying the ETC resolve file, so I definitely want that. 
traditional configuration. To allow regular users permission to configure network connections, you should add them to the NetDev group and create a poll kit rule grants access. Right, and I'll modify so it's append the group net dev to kernel text. So, yeah, that's in net dev now. Now I'm not going to install the boot scripts because I, I really don't want this affecting my um, network connection at the moment. Um, I don't want it starting. Yeah, if using Network Manager to manage an interface, any previous configuration of the interface should be removed and the interface brought down prior to starting Network Manager. So we've got network files, Network Manager would take that over and do its own thing. So I'm definitely not going to install that. But apart from that, that package is built. And we should see references to it when we get them running although we may not be able to use it to do anything clever so that's network manager it's now going to install tracker So this is actually part of the GNOME desktop anyway. So I'm going to move Tracker into GNOME and extract it to here from there. And it's a fairly straightforward build. And I can test it. Okay, so all those tests are passed. Let's install the package. Oops. And that's tracker built. So that's one of the packages that's in the GNOME section they're actually building. So we'll be skipping over that in a short while. 
next we've got telepathy, glib. So I've had our bindings, we've got static, alright we can build some documentation. And build it. Okay, so now we can test, run tests. There's one error there. Uh, oh, sorry, there's five errors. Actually, there's a four known to fail, but we seem to have five for some reason. So, not sure what they were, but. I think it'd be okay to carry on with make install. There's quite likely there's an extra test there that's been put in since this was written. Um, I say a lot of the comments seem to be a little bit out of date. So that's telepathy jitter done. And that was in chapter nine. So now we can build finally folks, which is where we were originally. So let's go back to GNOME. Okay, so we can still have to download this. So it looks like I haven't deleted the Grilo directory. So let's do that first. And extract folks and configure it track of back end. Okay, so we can add in, but it says the functionality is broken. 
So we could add it in, it just won't work. So there's almost no point really. So let's, uh, although I suppose arguably we could do in case it is working now, in case these instructions are still a little bit out of date, let's put it in and put the docs in as well. And Ninja to build it. Okay, so it's built. Let's run Ninja test. Test it. Okay, yeah, the tracker tests are failing, so that's what kind of would have expected if the um, interface is, the application interface is broken. Okay, so I, I think that's a pass because they all seem to be um, errors relating to tracker. Uh, I don't know how far back we'll be able to go here. Not that far actually, but if you look down everywhere, all you can see is the word tracker. So that's okay for me. Let's install the package. So that's folks done. So DFB graph, let's download this. DFB graph. Oh, has that not downloaded into? What am I doing wrong? Oh right, okay, it's taking its time. Oh, 
What's going on here? TFB. Oh, it's G, isn't it? Uh, I think it's time for a break soon. Um, right, so this is fairly straightforward and we've got an enable GTK dock option. Test suite, just got one command to install it. And it's done. GFB graph. So the next package is tracker, which we've already done now. So move on to tracker miners. This has got a couple of extra. Requirements. GRSS. So I'll put that where it belongs and extract it from there. to reconfigure to do. Oh, didn't download the patch. In case. So I'll run the patch and auto reconfigure and then I'll move the patch to where it should go. That should go into BLFS, that should be. Yeah, 486 files, definitely. So now we can configure with Enable GTK Doc. And build it. And run make check. That's all good. Make install and it's done. So this is uh, chapter nine, I think it was. Yep. The GRSS. So now we've got one called XMP. So again, I'll move that to where it belongs. Set and a reconf again, and then there's no other options for the configure. So we can just copy and paste, configure and build.
and now we can run some tests. And make install. That's done. So that's chapter nine as well, I think, is it? Yep, chapter nine. XMP. So now we can build tracker miners. So we've got G, libgrss, we don't need this, so that's okay, we just copy and paste the commands. So I've got ninja test to run, and it does say that some will fail. There's one there, three. It looks like the format of the test names has failed. Uh, sorry, not failed. Uh, changed since this documentation was written, or the documentation hasn't been updated. Um, test image one is the first one, but then we've got Office Doc and PDF Doc. I don't see anything that's got this numbering in front. Not yet, anyway. Oh, there it comes, so maybe it is up to date. It's, yeah, oh, it's actually called functional-300. So we did get an error. So it's only the 401 extractor flat Q sheet that failed. Um but we've got a couple of other failures. So we've got two of the known eight tests that failed and two other different ones, so I'm not sure why that is. But that, that'll be fine to go with that. Install that and it's done. So that's tracker miners. And then the last one we've got in the section is G sound. And looks like this is quite a straightforward package. So yeah, it is, we just add in the enable GTK doc for some extra documentation. So build it. And install it. That's done. So that's all the packages that have been built in the library selection and the next section will be run required runtime dependencies.